Woe is me, consumed by fire, I fall, dragging my shadow to where I don't now even recognize myself. Pedro Calderón de la Barca, El Gran Teatro del Mundo. Welcome back. You may not have missed me, but I missed you. Chapter 13's first sentence emphasizes and resolves the narrative problem of separate yet simultaneous events. Knights and squires split up, the latter recounting their lives and the former their loves. But the history relates first the discourse of the servants and then proceeds to that of the masters. The squires commiserate together. The other squire cites Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. We eat our bread by the sweat of our brow. Curiously, he leaves unspoken the ominous conclusion to that verse. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Next, they discuss their rewards. Sancho hopes for an island, whereas the other squire wants a cushy religious post. Sancho recalls when the priest had assured him that his master would be an emperor, or at the very least, an archbishop. Your grace's master must be a knight of the ecclesiastical variety, but mine is a lay knight. Although I do recall when certain discreet persons, although they seemed malicious to me, tried to counsel him to become an archbishop, but he insisted on becoming an emperor. Sancho concludes by stating that he is incompatible with the church. Although I seem a man, I'm an animal when it comes to joining the church. When the other squire suggests they return to their farms where they have the means to live well enough, Sancho brags about the value of his ass. I have an ass that is worth twice as much as my master's horse. And again, your grace will think I'm jesting about the value of my gray. The other mentions his three children and Sancho says that he has two, placing special emphasis on his daughter, who I'm raising to be a countess. Sancho says she is as fresh as an April morning. The other's response crosses the line. Oh, son of a whore's whore, and how tough the little rascal must be. Did you know picaresque novels commonly focus on the questionable sexuality of their characters, alluding to the loss of their virginity, adultery, and homosexuality? Things just got very uncomfortable. Sancho is offended at the idea that his daughter or his wife are whores, although we should remember that he used the same phrase to describe Aldonza Lorenzo in part one. The exchange also recalls the improper sexual relations of the picaresque novel, La Farilla de Tormes, in which the hero's wife is a concubine of a local priest. Remember too, that Sancho's son, Sanchico, has a suspicious uncle, his uncle, the abbot. What is the title of the most famous picaresque novel in Spanish? A. Lazarillo de Tormes B. The Little Prince C. Gone with the Wind Correct answer A. Lazarillo de Tormes The other squire backs away from a potentially explosive situation, insisting he meant praise. Do you not know that what seems to be an insult in a certain context is actually a noteworthy compliment? But the relative impurity of Sancho's family is still at issue. Similarly, Sancho now discusses his own immorality. He hopes to see his family again, so that I'll see them again, I pray to God that he lead me away from mortal sin. At this mention of God and mortal sin, Sancho suddenly confesses his original crime from part one, a purse of 100 ducats that I found one day in the heart of the Sierra Morena. On the one hand, Sancho feels guilty. On the other hand, he brags. Note how his memory has inflated Cardenio's money into ducados, a coin of slightly greater value than the esculos. Sancho even fantasizes about getting rich off income from financial instruments. I hold leases and collect rents and live like a prince. That's all for now. Please tune in to watch our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the Knight Errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.